Hi Creekside, it's Miss G here, and we are going to, well, the whole Nelson clan is here. Um, we're going to read you a book called The America's White Table. Actually, it's my husband that's going to read to you because he's just so much better at it. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll probably stop and pause and do some teaching because the kids have never actually read the book before either. Ow! Sorry. Your game could really just scratch me. Yeah, it gets you. It gets you. Uh, so this is America's White Table uh, by Margot Tice Raven. I'm trying to get you the picture of the book. I'm not getting it there from this side. So here we go. It was just a little white table, but it brought tears of pride to my Uncle John's eyes the Veterans Day he came for dinner and stood by it, set for one person, even though nobody would be eating it. It was just a little white table. But earlier that day, Mama had told Gretchen, Samantha, and me, the little white table we were setting for Veterans Day was just like the ones that have stood across America in the dining halls of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force since the Vietnam War ended. I'm trying to avoid the glare. The tables honor the men and women who serve in America's armed forces, especially those missing in action, our MIAs, and those held prisoner of war, our POWs. It was just a little white table, but it felt as big as America when we helped Mama put each item on it, and she told us why it was so important. We use a small table, girls, she explained first, to show, her, to show one soldier's lonely battle against many. We cover it with a white cloth to honor a soldier's pure heart when he answers his country's call to duty. We place a lemon slice and grains of salt on a plate to show a captive soldier's bitter fate and the tears of families waiting for loved ones to return. She continued. We push an empty chair to the table for the missing soldiers who are not here. I see it. See what? The picture. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to make sure that it's <laughs> visible. We lay a black napkin for the sorrow of captivity and turn over a glass for the meal that won't be eaten. We place a white candle for peace and finally a red rose and a vase tied with a red ribbon for the hope that all are missing will return someday. Mama finished speaking just as sunlight spilled on the table and filled the overturned glass. It was just a little white table, but it suddenly made me want to burst with a feeling I couldn't explain when Mama told us how much our setting the white table would mean to Uncle John that night. Then she told us something we didn't know. Our Uncle John, who gave us big bear hugs and spun us with airplane twirls and called me his Katie girl, was a POW in Vietnam before we were born. It was just a little white table. But it gave us the courage to ask Mama what happened to Uncle John in Vietnam. She quietly told us his story. When Uncle John served in Vietnam, he was sent on a rescue mission, and his helicopter was shot down behind enemy lines, she began. And he and his three crew members were taken prisoner. One crew member named Mike had serious wounds from the crash, but Uncle Tom and the other men tried to help Mike get better and persuaded a guard to bring Mike. Then one day, when a guard looked away, Uncle John and the others had a chance to escape, but Mike was still too sick to go. So Uncle John stayed behind because he wouldn't leave a fellow soldier alone so far from home. But how did Uncle John get free? We asked Mama. Sometime later, Uncle John had a chance to escape again, and somehow he was able to take Mike with him. 
carrying him on his back and collecting just enough rainwater and big leaves to keep him alive until Uncle John found an American infantry unit to help him. But even though Uncle John did everything he could to bring Mike home alive, Mike's wounds were just too serious, and he died before the rescue helicopter landed. I know that Mike was only 20 years old, and he dreamed of playing football, but he loved America enough to give his life for his country when duty called. And I know how much Uncle John loves America too, but he learned when helping Mike that a soldier risks his life for a fellow soldier because the best of your country lives in every man and woman who would lay down their life for you too. It was just a little white table, but it needed words of gratitude like Mama's Thanksgiving meal. So before Uncle John arrived for dinner, Gretchen and Samantha and I decided to put three gifts of our own on the table to honor our veterans. Gretchen colored pictures of all the objects on the table, and Samantha wrote out the words of My Country Tis of Thee as a tribute and song. But I didn't know what I, a 10-year-old girl, could ever put on the table that was as important as each veteran's gift of freedom to me. It was just a little white table, but I looked at it all dinner long, and in the quiet inside me, I could almost hear the silent soldiers of the empty chair saying, remember us, please. We are real people like your Uncle John and Mike who left families and friends, homes and dreams of our own to protect your birthright of liberty from disappearing as easily as sunlight from glass. It was just a little white table, but it took my words away when I hugged Uncle John goodnight and wanted to thank him for serving our country so bravely. So I just hugged him even harder and told him I loved him. Uncle John hugged me back even harder than I had hugged him. And that's when I knew what I could put on the table. My promise to put the words from my heart into a little book about America's white table. And in the book, I'd use Gretchen's pictures and Samantha's song and Mama's story about Uncle John and his friend Mike, because I hope that everyone who read it would set a white table on Veterans Day too. So the brave Americans, the little white table honors, won't ever feel forgotten by the country they love so much. Then, in the salt, on the little white table, I traced in the grains of their family's tears what each man and woman who serves America is to me, a hero. And that's when I saw the tear of pride fill my Uncle John's eyes. And that, is America's White Table yep. by Margot Tice Reed. So to all of our Creekside veterans and current uh, military, we thank you, we love you, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Woo!